What was this weapon that you carried into war, given that you abandoned your unit right before they went to Iraq, and he has not spent a day in a combat zone? What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. Governor Tim Waltz's military service gets exposed by J.D. Vance. So in this video, we're going to talk about it. Welcome to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Governor Tim Wall served in the military. I also served in the military, in the Army, for 13 years. And I got to tell you guys, this is probably the worst story that could come out and potentially could be exposed and become more of a national story in regards to Governor Tim Walz, who is now the vice president running mate for Kamala Harris. And that is the whole stolen valor conversation. For everybody in the back who do not know what that means, uh, stolen valor just basically means that you are pretending to be uh, something in the military that you are not. You are pretending to have received rewards or an award or badges um, or you're pretending to have served in the military when you never did. In fact, it's probably the worst thing besides going AWOL that you could do as a veteran. So uh, without further ado, let's play what J.D. Vance had to say about Governor Tim Walz's military service. Well, look, I came from a family where nobody in my family had ever gone to law school. I was I grew up in a poor family. The fact that Tim Waltz wants to turn it into a bad thing, that I actually worked myself through college, through law school, and made something myself, to me, that's the American dream. And if Tim Waltz wants to insult it, I think that's frankly pretty bizarre. Now, look, what, I, what, what really bothers me about Tim Waltz, it's not even the positions that he's taken, though certainly he has been a far left radical. You know what really bothers me about Tim Waltz as a Marine who served his country in uniform? When the United States Marine Corps, when the United States of America asked me to go to Iraq to serve my country, I did it. I did what they asked me to do it and I did it honorably and I'm very proud of that service. When Tim Waltz was asked by his country to go to Iraq, you know what he did? He dropped out of the army and allowed his unit to go without him, a fact that he's been criticized for aggressively by a lot of the people that he served with. I think it's shameful to prepare your unit to go to Iraq, to make a promise that you're going to follow through, and then to drop out right before you actually have to go. I also think it's dishonest. Something, again, if you guys ever get an opportunity to ask Tim Waltz or Kamala Harris some questions, he made this interesting comment that the Kamala Harris campaign put out there, and I bet they were regret regretting they put it out there now, because he said that we, and he was making a point about gun control, he said we shouldn't allow weapons that I used in war to be on America's streets. Well, I wonder, Tim Waltz, when were you ever in war? When was this, what was this weapon that you carried into war given that you abandoned your unit right before they went to Iraq and he has not spent a day in a combat zone? What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. And if he wants to criticize me for getting an Ivy League education, I'm proud of the fact that my mamaw supported me, that I was able to make something of myself. I'd be ashamed if I was him and I lied about my military service like he did. Okay, J.D. Vance came with the heat. I mean... Listen, I, I really have just three things to say about this. Number one, it, it's the most embarrassing move you can ever make as a veteran is to claim that you were deployed when you really were not uh, to claim that you were some, you know, badass special forces soldier and you were not or you uh, were rewarded certain badges or awards when you were not. I mean, that is the worst thing that you can do besides going AWOL, okay? So um, that, that that's the, the first point I want to make. The, the second point I want to make is about the fact that Tim Walsh received a lot of backlash even before being chosen for vice president. During his time when he ran to become the governor of Minnesota, he also faced a lot of backlash around this and his military service because, again, his unit was being deployed to Iraq and he decided to get out of the military at that time. Now, you can look at that any way that you really want. It's his prerogative. It's his freedom to get out of the military. There's nothing really wrong with that. But if you're running for uh, an, an office, right, you're running to be the governor, you're running to be the vice president potentially of the United States, it's probably not a good look that your unit was going to Iraq and you decided to get out of the military. Now, and from a leadership point of view, you are the top dog. You're supposed to be a command sergeant major, meaning you are the pinnacle and when you just decide, hey, I'm getting out, 
uh, you you're going to expect that people under you who were looking up to you to be disappointed, right? And and that's the thing, especially on the enlisted side. These are the people executing the orders. Uh, they take that very personal, you know. And it, it'd be one thing if he had already planned to retire, right? And uh, and the reason why is because he was running for Congress and he had made that very very clear. Uh, that that'd be one thing. But when the unit receives orders for deployment. And then all of a sudden, people get out. Come on, man. I, I'm, I mean, I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. Understand something. This is early 2000s. This is right after 9-11. This is right after 9-11. So, yeah, this is a big problem. This isn't he didn't want to go to Iraq five years ago. No, he didn't want to go to Iraq when the war was kicking off. And point number three uh, is about this whole command sergeant major title, meaning uh, he was being recognized as reaching a certain rank. Uh, however, he wasn't really that rank. And he never publicly went out there and told people, hey, I'm not really that rank. I'm actually this rank instead. And so that became a controversy as well, which leads me to this video that was released exposing this uh, for everybody to watch. Let's take a look at this. He, he abandoned us. You know, I mean, what the hell kind of leader does that? I mean, he just as soon as the shots were fired in Iraq, he turned and ran the other way and hung his hat up and quit. We'll get to Barron's new message for voters in a moment. But this all starts years earlier, when Barron says Wall's misleading statements about his military service first led him to come forward in the fall of 2018. So you try to get this message out, but Minnesota's largest newspaper checks it out, says it's 100% true, but yet refuses to print. When I hung the phone up, I said, what the hell is this, North Korea? Back in 2005, a warning order went out to the 1st Battalion 125th Field Artillery to mobilize for a mission to Iraq. At the time, Walls served as the unit's highest non-commissioned officer, but months later, Walls would retire from the Guard, avoid the deployment, and run for Congress. Tom Behrens was next in line for the position and was asked to take his place. I was like, well, for Pete's sake, if this guy quit. And if I say I'm not going to do it, I mean, what the hell kind of leadership is that? If a company would say that we're going to deploy to Iraq or somewhere and you're going to be gone for whatever amount of time. And then the foreman just says, no, I'm not going. I mean, what does that say to the 500 people that work in that factory? Barron's would go on to serve in Iraq on a nearly two-year deployment as a command sergeant major. Allwell Walls began using that title as a congressman. Barron says he first contacted Walls with his concerns, sending these letters to Washington. They all went unanswered. But then we fast forward to the election in 2018 in Minnesota, and you try at that time to get people's attention with this story and also with what seems to be a very misleading statement that he continued to make about his service. It kind of just sat there. You know, when he was a congressman, he, you know, he bragged that he was, he was a command sergeant, retired command sergeant major. I'm the highest ranking person ever in the, in the House and, you know, all this lie that he was telling. The state of Minnesota came out after 2018, after this was exposed, and they said, well, he can say that he served as a command sergeant major, but he can't say he's a retired one because he's not. And that's what he was saying. And he was saying that, and there was lots of public, you know, lots of cards coming in the mail, you know, for him to be elected. They said right on there, he's a retired command sergeant major, just tooting his own horn, just hanging on the coattails of people that actually are command sergeant majors that went through all the process and put all the time in. A spokesperson for the Minnesota National Guard said Walls wasn't able to retire as a command sergeant major since he failed to complete coursework and requirements related to the rank. Verified documents show the Army corrected his service record. Walls was reduced in rank to an E-8 master sergeant after retirement and his conditional promotion. Alpha News again asked Governor Walls if he's using the command sergeant major rank on his campaign website for political gain this year. A spokesperson said this has been in the news before and pointed us to a past story where Walls said, quote, normally this type of partisan political attack only comes from one who's never worn a uniform. OK, so you guys seen that. And it's coming from people who have uh, served in the military, uh, people who have served with him. And so let's break down a couple of things in case you guys aren't really understanding the title of a command sergeant major. OK, so there's basically nine levels of on the enlisted side. I always tell people in the military, you have two sides of a chain of command. One side are the individuals responsible for executing the orders, and the other side are people who are re responsible for giving the orders. He was on the side of executing the orders, and there's nine 
levels to that. Now, Command Sergeant Major is the ninth level. It's the highest level you can get to on that side. And what happened was, because I'm very familiar with this, is obviously before you can get to the ninth level, you have to be at the eighth level, which is known as a Master Sergeant, an E8. What happens at that level is the, the people who give the orders, the officers, they end up deciding, hey, we want this person to be the next command sergeant major, which would be the ninth level. We want this person to be the, the uh, next person in charge. And there's a difference between a sergeant major and a command sergeant major. Command sergeant major is someone who's absolutely going to be in charge of a brigade, potentially. Um, and it doesn't matter if you don't know what that means, but the bottom line is it's someone who's going to be in a leadership position that's involved with officers who are making the critical decisions for the entire unit. And so it's a position that is um, uh, appointed from a political standpoint. It's a position that requires someone to be obviously certified. They have to go to a particular school. They have to pass the Sergeant Major Academy. And uh, according to what they're saying in the records, he never did any of that. So to even say that you are a command sergeant major, it would be like saying that you are the principal of the local high school after serving as a teacher, but you never completed your credentials to be the next principal, even though the higher ups want you to be the principal, but you never actually became the principal and you never completed your education to be the principal. But after you retired from the education system, you continued to tell people I was a principal at the local high school, et cetera, et cetera. I think you guys are getting my point. And that right there is an example of stolen valor. Do not go out there and say that you are something that you are not. It just is not worth it. And veterans the, the zero tolerance on this. We do not like this. So I guarantee you one thing. People in Minnesota who have served in the military, they're going to pay attention to that. They're not going to like it. And it might actually sway their vote. Who knows at the end of the day. But I could only speak for my experience as a veteran. When you go the stolen valor route, it's a zero tolerance thing. I have no sympathy for you. I'm not going to vote for you. I'm not going to like you. It's, it's the worst despicable thing you can do besides going AWOL. And you guys know me, I like pulling out the receipts. So let's actually read this story on militarytimes.com. Now this is published uh, obviously today. Um, and uh, basically what happened was <laughs> a, a couple of things in this article. What they're doing is what, what they did with Kamala Harris. Every article that was published in regards to her racial identity, where it said that she was a uh, Indian American, Jamaican American, they went back on the internet, all these propaganda news websites, uh, they updated it to say uh, American Indian and black. Um, so they're scrubbing the internet to try to correct anything that could be damaging to her campaign. And they're doing the same thing with Tim Walz here. So anyways, um, uh, the, the first point here is Walz retired in 2005 as a master sergeant. Okay. Master sergeant, like I told you guys, is E8. It's the eighth level. He did not complete additional coursework at the U.S. Army Sergeant Major Academy, just like I said. Uh, command Sergeant Majors who do not complete the Sergeant Major course revert back to their prior rank. Exactly. So, again, he was identified to become a, con a Command Sergeant Major, never completed the actual training. And then there is this where they're saying that uh, his retirement nullified the promotion, and on September 10, 2005, his rank was reduced to Master Sergeant. However, Walsh continued to use the rank in descriptions of his military career in campaign materials. And that's why you guys saw in that video how they showed, even on his website when he was running for governor, that he had continued to use that title, uh, retired command sergeant major for his political career. When he used that, it was stolen uh, valor. Okay, so you guys have seen that, and you guys can go Google it and look it up yourself. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, if he dropped out of the command sergeant major academy, he should have just said, reduce me back down to the E8, which is a master sergeant, and be done with it. And by the way, even if he, it was an honest mistake, why would you put it on your website, right? Why would you campaign with that title knowing that it's not a fact, right? I mean, it just isn't. And anyone who served in the military knows exactly what I mean. So as I wrap up this video, um, I'm telling you guys, the propaganda machine for the Democratic Party is working on all cylinders, right? They're going to try to bury this story. Um, is it really relevant when it comes to voting for Tim Walls? 
yeah, it is relevant because it speaks to what they're willing to do to get votes. It's just like the Kamala Harris thing. She was willing to change up her accent in order to get black votes down in Atlanta. The one thing that you could say about President Trump, it doesn't matter where he goes. It doesn't matter who he's in front of. He's the same guy every single time. And, you know, say whatever you want about Trump. But I have yet to hear him trying to act like something he's not, be someone he's not, and do things that are as shady as what Tim Wallace was doing with his military record. So that is my mindset about this. What about you? What do you guys think about this? Uh, his military service getting exposed uh, by J.D. Vance and the media finally uh, even covering the uh, story, which is which is interesting. Um, what do you guys think about this? Put all your answers in more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Uh, stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.